Good morning, Metro Phoenix. Thank you for taking time to review my listing presentation. I hope you enjoy this and find the details helpful. Call me to schedule an appointment to meet with you and learn about the home you are considering selling. Perhaps you are not yet ready to sell and just want to understand its market value? No problem. I truly enjoy meeting new people and valuating residential real estate anywhere in the Valley of the Sun. If you are looking to hire an experienced agent, I would love to provide you with exclusive representation and world-class service. I have taken time to learn about some of the issues sellers face and what many think of us as licensed real estate professionals. Referencing the Harris Poll, they rank 22 professions, professions that require a license and or a degree. Out of 22 professions, the real estate agent or broker is the least respected. Why is that? From experience, it seems that too many agents take listings and market them above competition price. For example, the seller wants $750,000 for their home, and the real estate agent knows that the market value or competition price is at $650,000. The agent still takes the listing and markets for $750,000. Six months later, the house still hasn't sold. The offer expires and its validity loses credibility, as does the agent. Later on, the seller tells friends, family members, colleagues, and neighbors what happened. The seller will either be honest and suggest that they wanted too much for their house, even though the agent told them that it wasn't worth $100,000 more, or they'll blame the agent's competence, capabilities, etc. Typically, it's the latter. They'll blame the agent. Did you know that 40% of listings taken by agents don't sell within the first six months because they overprice them? Take that scenario and multiply it by the past several years or decades. It's then easy to understand why some rank our profession so low. I began my real estate agent career in Frankfurt, Germany back in 2014 after having worked for Accenture for over 20 years. Trust me when I tell you, I can easily understand why so many homeowners are frustrated with so many agents who do not perform as one would expect. You can also believe me when I tell you that I take this profession seriously and execute my services full time with world class service because I love what I do. I am certain you'll learn that about me during our first meeting. The number one complaint from sellers is lack of communication from their agent, especially after listing the home. I pride myself on what I respect and demand most of myself and of others, being competent, communicative, and friendly, as well as practicing integrity in all we do and say. Back to the overpriced example. During the first month, perhaps 10 to 15 buyers see the home and no offers trickle in. Shortly after, many agents become secret agents and fail to communicate with the seller. Listing your home competitively will increase the likelihood of getting your home sold under conditions that are desirable by both parties. Does marketing sell your home? Often, agents will go on and on about their brilliant 360 degree and or 31 point marketing plan. Granted, Professional marketing is extremely important, as well as applying detailed focus to everything and anything about the offer, the process, the support, follow-up, and so much more. Imagine listing a home for $500,000 and there were other active properties on the market and available, listed for $500,000, with better amenities, in better condition, in a better neighborhood, more perks, etc. My marketing content and strategy will cover everything and anything you can possibly imagine on top of open house events people will truly enjoy and not forget anytime soon. Even with the standard services offered to all clients of mine, will the example house sell? No. All others will, but not yours. Keeping the same example in mind, what if we priced competitively, so not for 500000 that similar listing price as other houses currently on the market are listed for, that may also offer more than yours does, your competition. 
and let's suggest that we recognize its true current market value of 485,000. Just an example, comparing apples to apples. Just as an example, we move forward and choose to deliver only basic marketing, which would include photos, a short description, and like others, offered through the Multiple Listing Service, or MLS. Will it sell? Yes. Now, not to discredit professional marketing, which I will always deliver, but a lot of it can be considered fluff, especially compared with the key elements, the priorities of selling your home effectively, condition, amenities, neighborhood, and most importantly, the listing price. Imagine being the buyer. As the buyer, you know what you can afford, what you've been pre-approved for, what you can finance. You find a buyer's agent, followed by searching through the list of available homes to purchase. The buyer looks at all the active homes for sale, those in their price range, and purchases the one that has the most value to them. Certainly, they will have appreciated your online 360-degree walkthrough of the home, especially if they are relocating from elsewhere or want to see the home again after the first or second showing. However, at the end of the day, it's not about the marketing. It's about the overall offer which either brings value to them, the buyer, or doesn't. The value proposition from your listing agent, like me, needs to include being truthful and competent. So, what is a marketable listing? The first and foremost important element is price. Price is key. A listing agent can spend thousands of dollars in marketing, but if the home is not priced competitively, it's not going to sell. And like anything else, first impressions are lasting. When you go onto the market, you must have all your ducks in a row. Overpricing your home will deliver a message to the buyer. Something must be wrong with the house, the seller, the offer, etc. If not priced at market value and competitively, you'll also lose out and dismiss about 60% of buyers that will skip over your home or even worse, not even see that it's available. The home's condition, being the second element, can affect the property. These characteristics of a marketable listing all affect price. Price is the overall factor. Let's discuss terms and conditions. If you as a seller are only accepting cash offers, are only offering showings once a week, and even worse, not allowing your agent to schedule open house events, you are weeding out most buyers. Overpricing will also deter anyone who needs to finance and cannot or will not bring additional funds to the table, over and above their financing ability, to make up the delta, or rather difference. We'll discuss your specific needs and circumstances during our first meeting to ensure that all your requirements are met. Accessibility. Of course, it's easier to sell a vacant home. But through great communication and organization, it's not necessary. What is necessary is to make the home available for buyers to view and inspect as much as possible and to accommodate standard buyer needs, as well as to get your home ready to show. Extensive staging is not necessary, but may be very helpful. You just want to ensure that you personally have imagined being the buyer and that your home is ready to be presented clean, organized, accessible, welcoming, decluttered, etc. Still, overall, price rules and will outshine all other factors in any market. So, would you also agree, whoever can get the most buyers to visit the home is going to achieve the best price and close the quickest? Call me, and let me know what you think. What are your goals as a seller? Let me guess. You want the best price. Typically, you also want to sell as quickly as possible. You want the least amount of inconvenience, least hassle. No seller has ever wanted to get an okay offer and then right before closing, witness the entire deal shatter, followed by going through the entire process again. Right? Right. All sellers want the same things, best price, shortest time, least amount of inconvenience possible. 
This presentation is designed to focus on just that. What you as a seller care about, need, and are looking for with my services within Metro Phoenix, the Valley of the Sun. Before we continue, I have a very important question I need to ask you. What attributes, or rather, what are you looking for in hiring a real estate agent? I suggest jotting these points down for future reference. You may answer as follows. We want the agent to do a lot of marketing. Super. So you want to get as many buyers into the home as possible. We want someone that will get the best price for the house. So not only do you want to attract as many buyers as possible, but you also want to achieve the best sell price possible. Correct? Wouldn't it be great to have an agent that truly knows how to negotiate? An agent like me? When we meet, I will note all your requirements and ensure that I address everything, checking off all your specific requirements and wishes. If I end up meeting all these requirements and desires, we'll be able to get started that same day. We want to make sure that your goals are in alignment with what my company can offer. Most sellers that my company and I work with have these same goals we've already covered. Number one, they want to get the highest price. Number two, they want to sell in the shortest time possible. And number three, they want to sell with the least inconvenience. Ask yourself now if these goals are consistent with yours. If your answer is yes, and you still want to overprice, then you are not going to sell quickly. So, what do I offer? I will offer you a bigger market. With over 85,000 independent agents worldwide, eXp Realty has your buyers that will get looking at and visiting your home. The more buyers, the better the sales price with the best terms and conditions. 98% of buyers start looking for the home they want to purchase on the internet. Thousands of people register on our website and will work with buyer agents, waiting for a property just like yours to become available. We alert our buyers immediately that your home is now available on the market. Would you like your property exposed to these buyers? We have plenty of advertising that sends buyers to our websites to view available offers and register, so we can continue alerting them of updates new listings, those that sold, etc. We also have the Multiple Listing Service, or MLS, which feeds all consumer-based websites. So your property will be there competing with all other available homes on the market, which is why pricing is so important, as well as professional marketing and a prepared home ready for buyers to visit. I will also offer you a better market. Not only do we collectively have more buyers, but our buyers are also more qualified since our agents focus on ensuring that their buyers are pre-approved and ready to buy. When my colleagues bring buyers through your house, they already know that the buyer can afford your house since they are pre-approved. We have a corporate relocation department with over 5,300 relocation agents. We contract with corporations. Whenever those buyers move into this area, they use us as a real estate company, an entire pool of additional buyers, and they're highly qualified. Our agents work with all other agents using the biggest referral system any real estate company offers. Would you like your property to be exposed to these additional buyer pools? And I will bring you greater know-how. I am more skilled and competent than other agents, especially those who do not practice residential real estate full-time. With over 30 years of experience in client relationship development, I also have extensive skills in conducting property valuations, residential sales and rentals, and property marketing. I was born and raised in beautiful Utah. After spending a year in Buenos Aires, Argentina, I moved to Germany, where I lived for nearly 30 years. This afforded me experiences throughout Europe with international, 
corporate processes, as well as owning and managing my own real estate practice in Frankfurt, Germany. I am 100% fluent in German and still conversationally fit in Spanish. I am detail-oriented and communicate and follow up better than anyone. I know how to work with all transactional parties involved, treating everyone with dignity and respect, which comes natural to me. You'll often see my taglines or slogans stating the following, passion, inspiration, and performance. Another word you'll quickly learn to associate with me and those I work with is integrity. My boutique style, world-class service and goals will be aligned with yours. Best price, shortest time, least inconvenience. You're also going to appreciate the commission structure I have in place. I manage the buyer experience. Think about your specific buyer experience with the home you currently own and want to sell. You went through different homes before you bought your home. Whatever made the best impression and had the most value, that's the one you purchased. So, understanding the buyer's experience is critical when listing a home. My job is to make sure that when somebody walks into your property, looking around, then walks into other comparable properties, they don't compare to yours, presenting itself better. If you'd like, I can get a professional home stager that I will pay for to go through your home and provide you with a list of items you can do on your own. Again, this doesn't cost you anything unless you order the home stager yourself. Professional home staging helps us to sell quicker and for a higher price. We want to outshine other houses that buyers are looking at. Typically, we don't need additional professional staging if your home is clean, well-organized, decluttered, etc. It may be a brilliant solution, however, if your vacant home is unfurnished. If your home is vacant, the professional marketing I provide will always include virtual staging images of all rooms furnished, so buyers can envision what it would look like. This is incredibly helpful for any buyer and triggers ideas, answering some questions that imagination often can't. Where my value proposition also comes into play is with negotiation skills. This is another feature or attribute I bring to the table. Let me give you an example of what I do when we get an offer. So, let's say we list your property for $500,000 and within a week, we receive an offer for $100,000 less than market value, $400,000. Most listing agents will immediately call the buyer agent and aggressively ask why they lowballed. This is a ridiculous offer. I'm not even going to show it to my seller. Here's the problem with that. That behavior resembles an inexperienced agent that hasn't ever learned how to negotiate. What do I do? I asked the buyer's agent what price range his or her buyers were looking in, and he, she may answer $500,000. Aha, so they were looking at the right house. Which house do they want? Yours. So they're looking in that price range and their first choice is your house. So why would I as a listing agent reject that offer even if it comes in lower than expected? The only reason it was lowballed is because the agent representing the buyer doesn't know how to negotiate. They don't have a strategy, so they're executing the buyer strategy, which is, let's offer low so we can meet in the middle, which is the dumbest negotiating strategy in all of real estate. So, we have a buyer's agent that isn't competent. What am I going to do with a low offer? I will call the agent and thank them for the offer. The other agent may be embarrassed. They may say, hey, sorry for the low ball, that's what the buyer wanted to do. And I'll say, it's okay. At least we have an offer to present to the seller for negotiation. I appreciate it. Now, it's my job as the listing agent to make the buyer's agent my friend or buddy. Hey, I understand how difficult your job is as a buyer's agent. I continue by asking the buyer's agent, are there any other houses the buyer is interested in besides my client's house? The buyer's agent may say, oh no, this is the one they want. So are they looking at the 400,000 price range 
or $500,000 price range. Hmm. Now, I as the listing agent have all the information I want. Our counter offer is going to be based on facts. We'll go through all the houses in the area priced between $400,000 and $500,000 and look at the alternatives. The only thing that matters now is the buyer's other choices. Are there any or aren't there other comparable choices? Everything else is noise and drama. If no other comparable houses match yours, the seller, we're going to counter with $500,000 unless there are others, competition. For example, 480, 490,000. I will present to you, the seller, the facts, and you'll decide how to proceed. We'll repeat the process again if they return with 450,000. We'll compare choices between 450 and 500, and if nothing compares, We'll counter again at 500,000. I will negotiate focusing on your best interests and delivering my fiduciary duty to you, my client. So again, I'm here to manage the buyer experience. You've got my negotiation skills and tactics. And the last thing is, I'm going to ensure a smooth transaction. First, I am extremely detail oriented, crossing all T's and dotting all I's. What I need you to do is to worry only about moving into your new home. And let's not forget our E&O insurance we have in place. So there's nothing for you to worry about. EXP Realty is one of the best, most credible brokerages in the entire country, which is why so many agents continue to navigate towards our company. Sometimes, sellers will ask me the following question. What is your job as a listing agent? Well, what do you think my job is? Typically, you may be quick to suggest the following. Well, it's your job to sell my home, right? Well, that's actually not true. Let me explain. The sell of your home is the result of me doing my job. The sell of your home is the result that you want. Let's dive deeper to help you understand what my job is as your listing agent. My job is to test the market. With your property, we're going to find a competitive price. Then we're going to put it on the market. One of two things will happen. It's going to sell right away or it's not going to sell right away. I'm then going to report the results of this test to you. We'll adjust our strategy based on those results and enhance the offer until it sells. I may never show your property to a buyer, depending on when that perfect offer comes through. I will conduct spectacular open house events, inviting everyone, including my colleagues at eXp Realty, as well as all other brokerages, locally, nationally, and internationally. As an international real estate professional, I have years of first-hand experience of keeping lines of communication open for everyone, as well as following up with any party involved and getting the job done properly. If I had to be the only person to find that one buyer that offers the best price and most convenient terms and conditions, it might take forever. So 99% of the time, I won't be the one that sells your home. As the listing agent, I am allowed to also perform as the selling agent if both sides of the fence agree. But typically, a buyer's agent called the selling agent will bring their buyer to the closing table, working directly with me. I will share my commission with that buyer's agent. If I do end up representing the buyer, again, not standard with my role as the listing agent, this will be facilitated through a signed form called the consent to limited representation, allowing me and my brokerage to represent both the seller and the buyer or landlord and tenant for rentals. By the way, if you're watching this presentation as a buyer, not a seller, rest assured that you can hire me as your buyer's agent. I will be thrilled to represent you as your buyer's agent anywhere in the Valley of the Sun. So what is my role? I am the messenger between the marketplace and you, the seller. 
I will present to you all your competition and those prices, other comparable homes on the market, and will ask you how you'd like to compete. If you're willing to compete, I am willing to test the market and list your home. Also, with any potential price reductions, we'll work together the same way. I will show you the results after 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 days, as well as your continued competition, other active listings, followed by asking you what you'd like to do with the reduced price based on facts, comparable homes that have sold, those that are pending, under contract, and those still active and for how long they've been on the market compared to yours. You'll learn about comparable homes sold, those that were on the market at the same time your home was, and that buyers chose to buy those homes, not yours, if that's the case. You'll be presented with your current competition, other homes still on the market, or new active listings comparable to yours. We'll look at your competition and identify strengths and weaknesses, comparing your home with these comparable homes still active and available, and you'll decide how to move forward for example, enhanced terms and conditions, a price reduction, seller concessions, etc. So, we've covered your goals being to get the highest price, to close as soon as possible, and with the least amount of hassle and inconvenience. What we're going to get into more detail about now is the price. There are three strategies for pricing a property. We don't want to price it too high. You'll remember that when you bought your house, there were probably other similar homes with the same price, but you bought yours since it brought more value to you. Amenities, condition, neighborhood, floor plan, square footage, living space, and the lot size. We don't want to price your home now above the competition, else it will be competing with homes that are, for lack of a better term, bigger and better. Would you agree that this is a good strategy? We also don't want to price it too low. If we price too low, your house will be compared to homes that are not comparable to yours. It may sell right away, and doing so, pricing too low, may create a bidding war, which might get the price up a bit, but in any market, that's too risky, and simply put, a bad idea. We do want to price the home competitively, so what we'll do is look at all the other properties in your neighborhood, or very close by, perhaps even in the same school district, that are comparable to your home, similar size, amenities, etc and make sure we are competitively priced so that your home lies within that competitive price range. Does that make sense? I understand that you'll want to get as much equity out of your house as possible to apply it to the next home you want to purchase. Ask yourself the following question. Does what you want for your home, what you desire, have anything to do with what a buyer will pay? you might have answered no. What you want for the home has everything to do with whether you should put it on the market or not. If the competition is going to net you far less than what you want for the house, then don't put it on the market, because what you need to net may have little to do with what a buyer will pay. It's just like buying a refrigerator. In one store, it's selling for $1,200. And from another store, the same or equivalent fridge is selling for $1,600. Of course, the buyer will choose the refrigerator for $1,200. Does that make sense? Either prior or during our first meeting, I will provide you with a professional market analysis, which will focus on three types of properties. The first type is what we call expired also known as market rejects. These properties had been on the market for six to 12 months and they didn't sell because they were priced above the competition. We want to pay attention to these to make sure that your home is not priced in the market reject range. 
The second type of properties are those that have sold. Let's take some time to discuss these. 90% of agents base their market analysis on sold prices. When you bought your current house, your agent showed you several available homes to purchase and you chose the one you're living in, correct? How many houses that were not available back then to buy that had been previously sold over the previous one to three months did your agent take you through before you bought your home? Most likely none. So, some agents base pricing on houses that prospective buyers had never seen or even knew about since they had already been sold. Isn't that ridiculous? <laughs> That's basing pricing on past sales or history. The key is, are you going to be competitive if and when you sell your home? Let's say you price a home at 650,000 and that house was the best one priced at that range, 650,000. It will sell. Just because that same comparable house sold a month ago at 625,000 doesn't matter. What does matter are the buyer's choices at the current time. When we look at sold properties, we do so to ensure that we're in the same territory or range. But what makes final sense to base your pricing on is the active type of properties. These active properties are your immediate competition. My assumption is that you are also in agreement that overpricing is simply a bad idea. So for this presentation example, let's have a look at the map form of those three types of properties so you can have a better view or idea, which represents one example property from one of my recent clients that wanted to list for $750,000. Although the market value clearly displayed a true market value of $650,000. When I meet with you, I will adjust this based on your house and the current data available. Again, as an example, the client wanted to list for $750,000. The first ones we looked at were the market rejects, expired listings. These are all homes comparable to theirs. One home had the exact same floor plan, and another even had a pool. Theirs didn't. One of them was on the market for seven months. The other two were on the market for nine and 11 months, respectively. None of them sold. Now, here we see what houses like theirs had sold for during those past one to three months back then. As you can tell, these sold for less than market rejects. The market is always and consistently changing. Currently, housing is stable. Most areas are also still seller markets, but some price reductions are still being accounted for. Now, let's look at their then current active competition comparable homes on the market they had to compete with. When I perform such a market analysis for you in the future, I will choose an area, school district, town, or a larger area to show you that buyers have a choice. They may or may not be in the same direct neighborhood or school district. Buyers do have choices and may choose a different location, which might also be another city or town. During this particular example, my clients then asked if we could start off at 700,000 instead of 750,000, which was still confusing, of course. They said that one of their goals was to sell their home quickly. So if we would have priced it above the competition, those other houses all would have had to have sold, right? And there would have been more new listings to replace those that didn't sell, which would have prolonged the sale of their home. It's a fact that 90% of all properties sell within the first couple of months. So, the minute we put your property on the market, go online, you've got all these existing buyers on that first day from all these different buyer pools we've discussed. Databases, broker-to-broker -broker referrals, hundreds of consumer-based websites, registered buyers, and hundreds, even thousands of buyer agents with their buyers all waiting for your property to come onto the market. That huge pool sees your home as soon as it hits the market, and if it's not competitive, they all move along to homes that are competitively priced. 
Later on, when you lower the price, the only buyers that the house is now new to are those that have additionally come onto the stage or market. Hence, the buyer pool shrinks considerably. You'll end up shrinking your buyer pool up to 70% if you come onto the market with an overpriced home, not competitive with others. So, ask yourself the following question. Are you willing to discard or eliminate, kick to the curb these buyers that are willing to purchase your home? This is one of the questions I will ask you when we sit down together to discuss everything. Whether we're going to work together effectively and ultimately successfully. Some sellers will still pursue overpricing. I do understand my clients and where they're coming from. For those that still want to test the market with a clearly overpriced offer, I've got a list of agents that I can refer you to that have taken listings that have never sold and they don't have a problem with that. But if you're not willing to compete, I won't be willing to list. Thank you so much for taking your time to learn about what I can do for you in listing your home and successfully finding the perfect buyer, meeting your requirements and special circumstances. In addition to being a certified listing professional, I am also an accredited buyer's representative, a seller representative specialist, and I also hold the ePro, Home Finance Resource, Pricing Strategy Advisor, and Real Estate Negotiation Expert Accreditations. Contact me today for exclusive representation and world-class service. Wishing you and your family only the very best until we meet or meet again sometime soon. Take care.